can he as a leader better others? And that's rare. People that want to say, as I climb, let me climb with others as well. Um, so I'm going to pose the, 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 give the mic to the audience. Whether you've read the book or haven't read the book, I think like the MC was saying that we are all leaders in our own rights. We are leading our own lives. We are leading our homes. We are leading our children. We are leading our corporations. So like Olam says, in the Kosa culture, in, in, the, in leadership, there's no title. The leadership is here. So we all are leaders. So whether you've read the book or not, but if you want to ask Olam a question, just maybe you've been looking at what's happening in our country and have a question to ask him about what he thinks is a solution for that country in terms of leadership. If um, you want to ask him, he was a soccer player before. I was so shocked. A rugby player. He was a rugby player. I was like, how? <laughs> when? <laughs> but if you want to ask him literally anything, I think he's, he's, he's well-versed in, in, in most things. Uh, so I will give this chance to anyone who wants to ask a question. Whether you read the book or not, don't feel like just because you haven't read the book, you can't ask a question. He wants you to ask anything about anything. And he will try his best to answer you. Okay. There will be a roaming mic and then we will run with answer. Okay, thank you and good evening to everyone. Uh, fortunately, I've had the privilege to read the book and I call it a privilege deliberately because we've gotten to tap into the mind of one of the greatest thought leaders that I think the Nelson Mandela Bay and even South Africa has to offer. So just on that note, Sebulela uh, Puti. Unlike your wife, my favorite chapter is chapter 14 where you speak about something that's very important which is the burden of leadership. And... You know, we scoff at the pains of leadership for those of us who have been fortunate to occupy such titles, but we embrace the pleasures. But jurisprudence teaches us to embrace both the pleasures and pains of whatever we've chosen to invest our heart in. And one of the lines in the book that you mention, you say, a leader without a community is displaced and lacks a social impact. But what I've gotten to understand um, in my youthful life is that leadership is such a thankless task. So how do we navigate our ways with that? Because most of the time to have to either lead people, lead organizations or be there and try and inject yourself into a community that is so thankless. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Um, I have two particular chapters. Um, I think, like your wife, chapter 15, and um, uh, like any politician, chapter 13 as well. I think I'm going to start with 13, which is speaking about the bribe and the, the analogy that you used in describing how, how everything happens. But there's something w weird we're not speaking about. Um, m my friends and I have uh, a, a sort of scenario as to how we explain it. When you are in a space or a factory where everyone, everything, a factory of factory faults, and then when you come in pure, you are the factory fault to them. And, and this is a conversation that we're not having. I am speaking about this as a young leader who comes in a space with ideas, ambition, drive. Um, you, you enter any system, especially an organized system, and you realize 
hey, but I'm the problem because I am not what is that the system has accustomed itself to. And we're not having that conversation. We're not having the conversation um, about how certain things are so organized